So there's a sense of conspiring people to get involved and, and that they have the power to, to make these maps. The idea is to repeatedly map one site so that you know that site and you, you're capturing imagery of that at the various stages of destruction. It would be useful, but also, uh, I think, kind of inspirational to get out to where, like the Chandelier Islands, and take imagery there to show that we can do it. You know, we have some wind, let's fly a kite. The, the rule of thumb is uh, less than 10 miles an hour is good balloon weather, more than 10 miles an hour is good kite weather. All right, so we need to kind of open it up. This is the front over here. These are the tails we can kind of tangle them. The kite is a little more turbulent, so you have to let the kite up about 50 to 100 feet before you attach the, the camera, and that's what we'll do here. You just take like this, this packing tape and some of this string, and you, you tie it on. One thing that we optimize for when trying to come up with these designs is, is it simple enough that you can watch someone do it once and reproduce it? This is what the camera fits inside of. If it hits things, this actually provides a lot of protection. And then if there's any amount of wind, this stabilizes it quite well. It looks really low tech, but it works and we've used it a lot of times and refined this. Uh, so this is very high tech. The script is on this little chip here. It's just a series of files and it just tells the camera to take a picture every five seconds. Um, so when you start it up, we're gonna set them set up with this auto start feature. So you start it up and it should be taking pictures immediately. If you have any kind of GPS, you know, turn on your tracker. Or if you have an Android or iPhone, you can take a picture and it'll, it'll store the location. Are we ready over there, guys, you think? It's pretty stable. All right, let's get this. I usually leave it up for five minutes on a balloon. On a kite, you know, we'll see. Do you want to uh, put tension on the line here? And then here, hold below this and just see if it will support that. I mean, it, it ought to. And then what you want to do is let it out pretty fast. I think the more we get imagery published, the more money people are going to donate to get more imagery. And, and the most important thing is that it's all public domain. So all the stuff we've uploaded, they're all pub completely public domain. They're available for anyone to see. Still capturing, yes. <laughs> um, all right, so. All right, huh? Yeah. Oh, this is a, oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Dogs have such a great life. <laughs>there's increasingly kind of a media blackout of the spill, it's tough to actually see what's going on. The message here is that anyone can get out on the beaches and to areas that have been affected and, and map the oil spill. Yeah, same. Like if, if you just hold it from here, then it tends to hold a shape better. The idea is to get a lot of people involved in producing maps and then share all the information, like Wikipedia style, you know? All you need is a kite or a balloon. You need a, a camera. You just take like this, this packing tape and some of this string, and you, you tie it on. One thing that we optimize for when trying to come up with these designs is, is it simple enough that you can watch someone do it once and reproduce it? Have the camera take pictures every five seconds. The data we're gathering is gonna be open source. You can do anything you want with it. There, there's no license, there's no restrictions. In the aggregate, if we all combine our efforts and we can produce large, full coverage maps of lots of areas. So, Walking around with a GPS is only going to get you so far. It can get you linear things, it can get you shapes, but it all kind of boils down to imagery. You know, the, the best uh, data we have that we use to make maps is satellite imagery, and there's no way that a citizen in the near future is going to be flying their own satellite. Uh, and the restrictions that you, that you get, I mean, you know, the GOI satellite can take imagery at lower than 50 centimeter, but it needs special permission from the
government to do so. So there's this, this whole framework in place. The, this kind of reliance on the kind of military industrial complex of satellite launches and, and, and by just saying, well, wait a second, why do we have to go all the way into space to take pictures of things that are right, literally right next to us, you know? Well, we could, we could use simple tools, like we could use like balloons or, or, or kites or whatever it is. Changes the power relationship there, you know? In this oil, oil mapping project, it was Google that contacted us asking for imagery. Our citizens who don't, have, don't even have any particular GIS experience are getting out and producing imagery that is so good that Google wants it in their data set, you know? You know, we're flying the kites and getting the imagery, and, and it's, it's the, literally the best out there. So the mapping we're doing is very focused on specific sites that are important to very specific people, very specific ecologies. And the ability to get it without asking anyone's permission is obviously pretty awesome. So. 10, 15 years ago, it wouldn't matter if we could take pictures from a kite. There's no way to get it to people in any reasonable format, you know? But now you can open a web, web browser and then like zoom around in our maps, and that works. Um, so yeah, in that sense, I think there's a lot of foundational software and tools that have been put in place over the past 10 years or so, without which this would be impossible. Yeah. Uh, this is the boat here. Um, and uh, we actually use that to get the scale of the image. And this entire map, which is like this enormous, enormous image file, uh, actually fits within a single pixel of the NASA daily MODIS imagery. Um, you got some terns, some brown pelicans. Uh, you can see some of the reef here. And then, of course, these huge strips of oil. In the Google imagery, this doesn't even exist. Um, and the oil is coming up from the southeast. So it's, it hit the Shandor Islands before almost anywhere else and is actually being deposited on there and then kind of getting squeezed through between the islands, which is, I, I think, what you're seeing here, where this huge amount of oil is coming around there and you have a fairly clear area right here. So I just thought it was really dramatic to see this huge flock of birds just sitting on a sandbar, surrounded by oil. You know. 